Hi, we're talking to Joseph Kahn, who's the chair of the Youth and Participatory Politics Research Network, newly formed, very interesting group of people, and is the John and Martha Davidson Professor of Education at Mills College. And there's an awful lot of talk about young people's use of new media and about their engagement or lack of engagement in in civic affairs and politics. N not a great deal of, of empirical work behind a lot of this talk. And so what I think what's really interesting uh, about what you and your, your network is, are doing is that you were really looking at the way young people are using new media and the way they are engaging or not engaging. So can you tell us uh, a little bit, I guess, uh, first of all about the Youth and Participatory Politics Research Network and then some of the, the findings? Certainly, and, and thanks for this opportunity. Um, so the Youth and Participatory Politics Network has just been uh, launched. We, we're a group of eight scholars uh, and, and really whole research teams tied to, to each of us, thinking about the ways in which young people's participation with the new digital media uh, may be uh, related to the differing ways in which they participate civically and politically and in the public sphere more generally. Um, we have a set of uh, research projects that are, I think, both quite unique because, as you mentioned, there's yet to be a lot of empirical uh, data on what young people are doing and how that relates to their civic and political life. And is also unique because the studies, while some are mostly conceptual and some are qualitative and some are quantitative, are all being designed to speak to one another. And so our hope is that uh, as, the, as the work proceeds, we'll have a, a, a vision of what's going on from a bunch of different perspectives that will give us a deeper understanding. So what your, your study that was, was, was recently uh, uh, discussed uh, online about how youth are, are, uh, are both interacting with media and, and participating in civic and political participation. The, the words in the press release said stark contrast between youth's participation with new media and their civic and political participation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I think that is one of the things that we're we're seeing, and I think many folks are aware of that. If you look at some of the baseline indicators that certainly folks have been tracking for, for a long time, uh, voting rates for young people are far below what we would like. In the 2010 election, uh, just under 23% of young people uh, voted. So while it was an election that got a lot of attention and people said signaled a real shift in public attitudes, 77% um, of young people, we don't even know what they thought. Um, so I think it's, it, becomes, it becomes quite problematic. And of course, civic and political life is about much more than voting. But if you look at lots of the ways in which folks get involved in society more generally, from volunteering to working on community issues, um, we, see, we see a lot of youth disengaged from that as well. The national survey, the Civic Health of the Nation, found that 55% of young people uh, they were categorized as, as disengaged from, from civic life as well as from political life. The, those kinds of numbers come in stark contrast to what we're all aware of in terms of young people's participation online. So we know that uh, young people spend a phenomenal amount of time connected both to their friends and using the internet and other mechanisms to get news to discuss it. So it's not, you know, what are the consequences of those forms of participation? Are there ways to link them to both online and offline forms of civic and political participation? And are there ways that some of the kinds of participation that they may do in online communities, for example, even when not related to civic and political life, may help to leverage uh, and maybe, you know, something we can leverage to build bridges or a gateway to, uh, to forms of civic and political participation, again, both online and offline. Well, I'm, I'm particularly glad to hear that. I, I, I wrote about that a few years ago. You may have read that, um, just, you know, not from em empirical data, but from my own experience as a parent and, 
and a teacher that, that no, no parents and teachers were, were, were telling all of these kids to put up these YouTube videos or to, exactly. to play these elaborate online games and they were engaged and they're learning a lot is it seems to me that there must be a way to in, engage that enthusiasm what do you think how well I, I think that so so some of our data begins to speak to us so uh, with funding from both uh, from circle which uh, is a research organization focused on civic engagement and with funding from the MacArthur Foundation we were able to look at young people in their junior and senior year and their levels of civic and political engagement and then reconnect with about 400 of them a little more than 400 of them up to three and a half years later and what that enabled us to do was to see how uh, are the degree to which they're participating in online communities, for example, related to the degree to which they participate in civic and political life. And what we found was quite interesting, that uh, to the extent that young people were engaged in what uh, you know, Hen uh, Henry Jenkins calls a participatory culture, or Mimi Ito calls an interest-driven community, to the extent that they were involved in those communities, even when those behaviors were unrelated to civic or political life, so they might have been a leader in a discussion group organized around uh, fan fiction or a hobby or uh, video games, as you've mentioned, we saw increases in the degree to which they got involved civically. So people were actually more likely to volunteer offline when they were part of these networks online. And I think there are a bunch of reasons that that may well, you know, that we, we can look to to explain some of that. To some extent, young people are gaining skills that uh, about when even when they're working in a non-political space that are quite relevant in a civic or political space. How to work in a group, how to negotiate things, how to get organized, how to organize other people. Another big issue is that they're getting put into broader social networks. And those networks become opportunities both for them to recruit others into activities and for them to be recruited into activities. And many of those networks are much broader than the networks that they might find in their purely socializing activities. So it was interesting. We did find a connection between the two. And we also found, in fact, that to the extent that they were involved in non-political spaces, it actually increased their exposure to diverse viewpoints. Many folks are concerned that uh, when, whether it's youth or adults, go online, we tend to seek out those who agree with us already. And certainly that is a phenomenon that occurs both online and offline. But we found that because many of these interest-driven communities are not around political ideology, they actually become spaces where people get opportunities to learn and hear perspectives that they wouldn't otherwise hear. It's interesting that in contrast, when we asked about how often they just socialized with friends online, say through Facebook or whatever, that that was completely unrelated to either increased volunteer or charity work or work on community issues. And it was also unrelated to increased exposure to diverse viewpoints. And that makes sense. A lot of that stuff is really just mirroring what they would get in their in their day to day lives. Um, socializing with their friends, so it's, it might it might expose them to new viewpoints. It might not, but it isn't likely to be particularly different than what they get in their regular social setting. You know, I, I find it interesting that uh, uh, people who are studying the way uh, young people judge the credibility of web pages are finding something similar. I know that uh, I recently read a, a study by Flanagan and, and Metzger at UCSD mm -hmm. uh, about how young people decided whether web pages were credible or not, and, and a, a general finding that young people who are engaged in online games or other kinds of online communities tended to be less credulous, more willing to mm -hmm. test the, the, the veracity of what they find online than others. So I think, you know, there's a seems to be a general trend in what you're talking about and what others are talking about that spending time engaged with other people on in non-school related, non-so-called educational activities may actually have a, a, a strong benefit or, or, or at least affords benefits. And I guess the, the challenge to educators then is how do, we, how do we build those bridges? How do we bridge those activities that they're doing voluntarily with the kinds of things that we want them to learn as educators? 
I mean, I think that's that that is you know for me you know working in a school of education and working with schools quite frequently that's one of the central questions because clearly the online space has possibilities for both positive as well as for problematic outcomes. Um, we know that there's unparalleled access to information, but we also know that there's no unparalleled access to misinformation. Um, we know that people can find out about new perspectives, but they can also zero in on active violence. How do we uh, help young people to tap more of the positive potential and avoid some of the risks? And, and a piece of that, I think, is one, not, not being so sort of afraid or hesitant to embrace online spaces that we just try to turn computers off or you know, tell people to turn off their smartphones, both because it won't work and because it's the wrong answer. The reality is there are a lot of great opportunities there. The question is, how do we help people leverage them to the greatest degree possible? And I think we found a couple of things that are exciting there. One is to encourage young people to pursue their interests. Um, there's a, and, and I think potentially to think about that in a way that's very different than we would think of encouraging them to talk to their friends. There's nothing wrong with talking about socializing, of course, but that's a different set of activities than going online to, to get deeply involved in something you care about. And it appears that a lot of the civic and political benefits come when people get involved in something that they care deeply about. So that's, that's one piece. We also found, we asked about the civic learning opportunities related to online space that young people had in school. And we found that they did have some of them, and that when they had those opportunities, for example, teachers required them to get different points of view about an issue or when they said go on, you know, uh, talk with them about how to judge the trustworthiness of information that's online. Um, we found that young people tended to use those strategies and do those things more during their discretionary time. So while we're inclined, I think, to think of young people as digital natives who know everything they need to know or can find out anything they might want to find out uh, far ahead of us, and in some ways that's clearly true, they, they are highly confident in many respects. It's also true that there is a big role for educators, both in school and out, for mentors, for parents, a huge role in helping young people get exposed to and learn how to negotiate some of the opportunities that are out there. And that when educators, be it in an after-school program or an in-school program, or when parents encourage young people to say, well, suppose you want to get a different view, or suppose you wanted to test the credibility of that statement, how would you do it? That young people benefit from doing that and, in fact, do those activities more on their own. So there's, there's more on, on your website for the youth in participatory politics. There are, I, see, I see that there are several working papers that can be downloaded. Definitely. So if, if folks are interested, we're, the, the website is now up, and, and there are several working papers that summarize this research. And certainly, we'll be adding continuously to the website uh, as our research uh, unfolds. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Well, thank you for this opportunity.